Hi friends, thank you for joining us today. This is my husband Nathan and we are going to um, do some poses that help relieve the pain from the sacroiliac joint, the SI joint. Um, this is a joint between the sacrum, which is the triangular part right above the tailbone, and the ilium, which is the pelvis joint. And what happens is sometimes you may have had an accident or um, some, uh, whether you were doing yoga or some other practices where the pelvis moves in the opposite direction of the sacrum. So that creates a torque and some of us unintentionally, especially doing yoga poses, because some of the yoga poses are so asymmetric, we tend to put a lot of pain or torque on that joint. Um, to relieve, release the tension, um, I'm going to just teach you some poses and Nathan is going to help us uh, demonstrate it for you. And we're going to start out um, basically with a low lunge. And I have three props here for you. It's really, I really suggest you invest in these props. These come in really handy. So you want to use a block. And if you don't have a block, you can use a nice heavy ball, something that is a um, little bit more sturdier than like a basketball would be good, not, not too soft. And then um, you're going to need a strap. Also use a belt. Again, belt, you don't want it to have too much give. So make sure it's a, a, a long towel or a sheet or a, or a belt that, is, that doesn't that has enough tension. And then um, we're also going to use a blanket. So go ahead and grab those props. And we're going to start in a lunge. You can put this bit pause and then come back and join us. But we're going to start first on a lunge. So the blanket is going to come in handy because um, it allows you to put your knee right on the, on the blanket as a, um, as a cushion. So go ahead and come into a lunge, Nathan. This is a lunge. Yeah, so your right, uh, your right leg is going to be in front. Your left knee is resting on the blanket. And then um, see if you can lift your hands off the mat and just bring your hands on top of the left, on the right thigh. That's it. And this is a really good place to start with. Because a lot of times what happens, because of that torque, the hip flexors get really tight. So you really want to allow that left hip flexor to soften down towards the floor. And at the same time, though, if you can engage the core, this way you're not leaking energy out of the core, that's right. And then from that engagement of the core, allow the hip flexor to soften. And how does that feel? Yeah. So that tightness always translates into another body part being, you know, under pressure or under, under contraction. And then you can switch to the other side and just notice w we always have one side that is a little bit more, a little bit tighter than the other side. Just notice if that's true for you. Good. So this is a really good stretch, actually, even if you don't have an SI joint issue to do every day, especially if you tend to sit for a long period of time, um, to really stretch out the hip flexors, the psoas muscles in the, in the deep in there. And then just send your breath to wherever you're feeling the stretch. Very nice. And then slowly come out of the pose. So go ahead and, and lie down on your back. We can remove the blanket. And then for the next pose, you're going to use the block. So go ahead and bend your knees, putting your feet flat on the floor. And the block is going to go right in between your upper thighs. So Put the block right in between the upper thighs. Make sure that the block is not between the knees. Again, if you're using a ball, make sure that the ball is between the upper thighs. And I want you to consciously squeeze the blocks. So this activates all the inner thigh muscles. 
And as you do that, you're releasing the uh, muscles on the outside, the opposite muscles. So squeeze it for about five, six seconds, and then release. And we're gonna do this for a total of five or six times. So inhale, squeeze the block, pause, hold there, and then release. And then let's do that three more times. Good. So you don't have to lift your hips up. The hips can stay down on the floor. You're just squeezing the lock in between the upper thighs. And then release. And two more. Nice. Squeeze the block in between the thighs. And release. And last one. That's it. Keep the hips down on the floor if you can. Very nice. And release. Good. Very nice. And then relax and notice if you, if you feel any difference. And then you release the um, block. And for the next one, you're going to use the belt. And this time, you're going to press out. So that activates all the abductor muscles, the muscles on the outside of your hips. So we're going to take the strap or the belt, and you're going to belt it around your upper thigh again. I'm going to go around you this way. And make sure you um, create enough tension where the knees are going to be hip width apart. So you don't want the knees to be way out to the side. And you put the belt or the strap around your upper thighs and you make it nice and tight so that the knees stay align, aligned with your hips. Good. Then make sure that belt is nice so it doesn't get loose. And then you do the same thing, five times, five, five uh, second holds, except this time you're pressing out. So inhale and then exhale, press out. Good, and hold. You don't have to hold your breath. The, let the breath just be flowing. All you're doing is squeeze, like you're using all the abductor muscles on the outside of the hips. And then release. And do this four more times. Inhale, squeeze it out, press it out. You want to create enough tension as if you're trying to tear the strap into two pieces. And release. And three more times. Good. And release. And two more times. Beautiful. And last one. And let it go. Yeah, there you go. Really use the muscles on the outside. Very nice. And release. Good. So that was the third exercise. You can release the belt and let it go to the side. And then for the next one, what I'd like you to do is extend the right leg flat. And you're just going to uh, lift the left knee off, left foot off the ground. That's it, just like that. And pause here for a moment. Very nice. Good. And then take your hands and put your hands right on top of your thigh. Yep, just like that. Let the head soften so the back of the neck is long. And I want you to do that same thing five times, five second holds. You're going to press your knee into your hands as you're pressing your hands onto your knee. Hold it for five seconds. That's it. Good. Release. And do this four more times. Press your knees to your hands as your hands are being pressed into your knees. That's four. Good. And then three more times. Very nice. And relax. And two more times. Nice. And one more. Good. And relax. Good. So generally, they say just to do this on the side that bothers you because usually a side joint only affects one side. 
Uh, but sometimes that pain can be on the side that you don't necessarily have the dysfunction. So I prefer to do it for both sides. So go ahead and bring the right knee up. And your, your hands are going to be right on top of your thighs. Five times, five second holds. Inhale, exhale, press your knee to your hands and hands to your knees. Good. And relax. Four more times. Last two, good. Pressing your hand onto your knees as the knees are pressed to your hands. And last one. Excellent. Good. And then relax. Very nice. Good. Let's rest for a moment before we do our last and final pose. So for the last one, I'd like you to roll over to your side. So go ahead and roll over to the right, the left side. And make sure that your head is comfortable. So I, I'm going to have Nathan put his head on the block. You can always put it on a nice uh, firm pillow or something so that you can stay here for a little bit. Okay, Kuchulu, we're going to move out. There we go. So imagine that Nathan uh, has pain mostly on the right side. So I'm going to ask him to take his thumb and put his thumb right where, where the SI joint again, again is. Remember, if you have the pain, you know where that is because it's like a little side of, size of a quarter right in between the sacrum and the pelvis. So keep pressing on that joint, on that point, and then bend your right knee and draw the right knee towards your chest and bring the right knee down towards the floor. Good. And then take that leg Pause here, keep pressing your thumb, and then begin to lift up that leg and bring it back behind you. Extend the leg back behind you. That's it, right there, good. And then move through this for five times. Bringing the knee up and down, and then taking the knee back behind you. Good, that's four. That's two. Very nice. And last one. There you go. And then relax. Good. And then we're just going to repeat that on the other side. So you can go ahead and just roll over or turn around, whatever is comfortable for you. So your thumb is going to go right on that quarter size spot. Draw the left knee towards your chest. Bring it down towards the floor and then take the leg behind you. Good. That's it. That's one. That's two. Nice and slow. This is this particular one especially good if you feel like there's a flare up. Um, sometimes the SI joint might not be necessarily every day all the time, but if you have a flare up, this would be a good one to move through. This kind of feels like you're popping it back in space in place. Good. And then once the last one is done, you can just go ahead and rest on your back. And just notice how you feel from the beginning. Before we started, you might already feel a uh, sense of opening, a sense of release. And just rest here for as long as you like to. And we're going to sign off for today. Thank you again for joining us. Namaste. We lost Nathan. <laughs>